Hello General. guys, how's it going? Screezilla here. I hope you're all well. Uh, so I'm going to weigh in on Bethesda's E3 conference. If you've not seen it yet, and if you play any Bethesda games, this may be of interest to you. If you've not seen it yet, I'm amazed. The Creation Club. So, a few years ago, Bethesda announced they were going to have paid mod content. Kind of works good, I suppose, for modders. Um, it's sort of one of those things that you go, oh yeah, that's, that's good for modders, but... Will it end up like Steam Greenlight? Uh, where it's basically just an utter load of wank. And you have to be worried about these sort of things because they can easily turn out to be pretty crap. Now, speaking as a player of War Thunder, we, we've had quite a few planes released that have been made by modders. Um, there was the Night Owl that was released, things like that. And they're really good, and it's really good for um, for for modders to actually have that Wait, opportunity available up. to them. Um, but one of the things that you have to really question is how is this going to affect the game? Because, well, first of all, this creation kit is going to be. A sort of um, available for Fallout as well as Skyrim. Now it's going to mean that more mods are available for things like PS4, which is good, but it means that those players on PS4 are going to have to pay for it, and it looks like they're going to have to pay a reasonable premium for it. Um, one of the big issues of this kind of system is the microtransaction issue. And that's where I really stand. Now, I play a lot of MMOs, I play a lot of free-to-play games or fee-to-play games, you know, War Thunder, fee-to-play, you know, fair enough. But you don't have to pay to play it, you know, you, you, you basically download it for free, if you don't want to pay a cent, you don't have to. Um, but a thing like Fallout 4 or Skyrim, they are premium games. They are AAA titles and they cost a fair amount of money when you first buy them. In Australia, for instance, uh, Fallout 4, Skyrim brand new, when it first came out, cost us about $100 for the game. And then you have all the uh, DLC and stuff like that. And I think I got something over here. It gets very expensive very quickly, so you end up paying almost, you know, $150, $160 all up for a game. Then to be told that there will be microtransactions in said game, years after its release, gets a little bit irritating. Um, you know, you, you don't want to be paying the amounts that they're going to be charging. Um, one of the things with the uh, creation kit system is their free announcement. They had it similar to that of Zenimax's uh, Elder Scrolls Online. Um, it's a similar system of the microtransactions and the costs. So, for instance, Mud Crab, uh, mud crab Armor. Um, now, of course, we don't know the prices yet, but Hold up. we can sort of get an idea of what we're going to be looking at. And, say for, for one mod, which, these are mods, they're not, they're, they're very well made mods, they're all professionally made by developers of the studios, but they're still mods, they're still after market game mods. So, say you want to have armour on your mud crabs, it's going to cost you 500, um, 500 Bethesda coins. Now, of course, we don't know the price of those yet, but usually that sort of currency is a, um... That, you, that, sort of, that sort of, um, currency is usually quite expensive. Um, so say, you know, 500 of those, uh, Bethesda coins costs you 
five dollars in real life that will only get you one mod so you might be looking at having to pay you know ten dollars to get two reasonably chunky mods say but then you may be looking at ten dollars to get just clothing upgrades so with my um as you see i'm using modded weapons here i've got a modded backpack modded hat um you know i've got lots of mods going on here because well this game is two years old now what was it yeah two years old um you know it, it's getting a little bit longer too if you've played it vanilla all the time so having mods refreshes the game but if i had to pay i don't know ten dollars to get this gun the backpack things like that it wouldn't enhance the game for me it would make me a bit pissy and that's what bethesda are doing here it's sort of like um if you if you've been playing for a long time and you uh hold on that it and you've um you know you spent lots of money on these games then you're just forking out more money for the same old shit now the other issue is for the modders and this is something that i do worry about because the modern community do this for love and they should absolutely get something back for some of the stuff that they do unfortunately we don't know exactly what they're going to be getting back and that can be quite scary. So the way they've, they've sort of put it for their system is the model will, um, nice. you know, have the option to sort of put down a mod, say, or put down content, creation kit content, because they made it very, uh, they made it very, um, they made a big deal of not saying mods, not saying paid for mods, which this is basically is. Um, but say the modder puts down the idea for, say, this machine gun, okay, the, the Chinese assault rifle, which was in Fallout 3, um, you know, and they're not going to be putting in mods that already exist, they say. But this isn't a mod for. You know, this isn't technically a mod. This is previous content from the game. So this is a item from um, Fallout 3 put into Fallout 4. So technically they own it. So it's like, well, we actually own this item. So it's ours to sell. So first of all, does this get removed from the base game does this get removed from um, from the actual base game or, or from the mods packs because well technically they, they own it so it's theirs to do with what they want but the other thing is the modder say this modder has done this work on this item and they you know go to Bethesda and they do the work for them now how much do they earn for that do they get a proper wage for it do they get living wage do they get minimum wage do they actually get part of the proceeds the way Bethesda have worded it is the model will get paid immediately so they'll get paid to work for the company but I don't imagine they're going to get paid the same as a developer they're not going to get paid the big bucks so to say they're going to get paid sort of uh, say they get paid a hundred dollars for their their property and then they get a percentage of that um of that mods total earnings they may only get say one percent now if the mod is costing I don't know, $100, they'd get $1 of that. If it's 10, they'd get 
you know, uh, what am I getting? Ten? That would be ten cent. Yeah, would it? My brain's gone completely dead. I think that's ten. No. Fifty cents? No, that's not right. Uh, uh, ten cents, yeah. Um, sorry, my, my mathematical brain has absolutely died on me. But anyway, what I'm trying to get at is how much will the modder earn? The other thing is, once they actually sign up for this, Bethesda are going to own the rights to that mod. So, they make this fantastic backpack, say. Backpacks are going to be added, we've seen that. But they make this awesome backpack. And they put it in. Bethesda do it all. They keep the modder on for a couple of months. And then the modder doesn't release any new content. And they go, oh well, you know, it's time for you to go. The modder wouldn't then get the rights to that mod. Bethesda would keep the rights. So all the work that person did would then be Bethesda's to sell. And that's one of the big issues. It's kind of like, yes, you earn a bit of money for these mods, but you're not going to be... Well, you may well be losing out in the long run. Because... Okay, I'll go through that. Uh, because, well, you're going to lose your intellectual property. And I can see this being a problem. The other thing, as I said, is... Well, these are bloody old games. You know, Fallout 4 not so much, but Skyrim. Skyrim is getting a bit old now. And to release... Payable DLC for it now... It, it seems a bit off. It, it's very... Greedy. And very annoying. And, yeah people deserve to get paid for their work. Modders do a fantastic job and they bring life to an old game, but they, you know, I'm not saying they do it for just the love of the game and the, the love of doing stuff, but they do it because they enjoy it. They, there is things like Patreon now, which you can support your modders for. You know, you can give them money for... Oops, sorry, Bob, mate. You can give them money for the work they do. And that's great. But when, when you're put into a situation that you basically are working for a company uh, like Bethesda, you sort of have the issue of then the rights and things like that. And what I fear is modders who do all this work are going to lose the rights to their intellectual property and then get shit canned for it. The other issue is they have said we're not going to be using existing mods. So things like the Nexus shouldn't have any problem. Well yeah, that's cool. But what happens if uh, as I said, you know, you've got a mod like um, adding content from Fallout New Vegas. Now, that's great because it gives us more content in Fallout 4. That's it. Uh, but the big issue comes when keep in mind that you can do that. Bethesda say, well, no, that's not your content to sell, that that's ours. We own that. We own the rights to this. We own that game. So you can't sell those items. Okay. Not selling them, we've just modded it. Yes, but we've got it on our site. We've got it for sale. And you can't use that anymore. He was asleep on the deck. Um, so then you start losing content from your mods. I'm not saying this is going to happen, but it's something that could happen. And that's the scary part, is you've got what the? people who have put a lot of time and effort into um, 
you know, bringing over content from previous games. And who's out there? It will cause problems because as soon as uh, Bethesda realise that their, you know, their content's being, Nothing there now. you know, they you can get the same long. item for free. Yeah. Whereas if you go with Bethesda's creation club, you have to pay for it. They're going to want to take it down off of things like the Nexus. So it can be very problematic and that's where I fear the main problem is going to lie. Is not in, you know, mods being taken down at first, but it's going to affect it in the future. The other thing is, say models go on to Bethesda and you know they they do the work and they they keep on there if they've already got mods out are they going to be allowed to support those mods that's something else that could be problematic is the fact that you've got people um, you know made mods uh, I think it's Eleonora who made some fantastic clothing mods in the game if she goes and joins Bethesda can she keep supporting her old mods so, yeah, it's a really tricky one, and I just, I feel Bethesda have gone about this all wrong. They've really put the capitum on the, amongst the pigeons, and this is going to cause more problems than it's going to fix, so to say. It's going to cause more, more shit to hit the fan. It's going to be like when they released the initial mod kit, the uh, paid-for mod scandal. You know, people are not going to be happy about this. People do not want this. Modders, even, did not want that. Because it just... I don't know. It's just something that really can ruin the system. And that's what I'm scared of, is it's going to ruin the modability of games. It's also going to ruin modding of games. I'd love to know what you think, guys. Let me know in the comments um, below. And uh, I'll see you next time. This is Squeezilla out. Alright guys, have a good day. Bye-bye.